Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the tetanus neurotoxin. Right, so we are in the process of discussing some physiology at the moment. We're in the process of discussing how, um, how you um, fuse vesicles together. So we've seen how you dock them together with these snare complexes. Now what we want to see is how you actually fuse uh, this synaptic vesicle with the membrane. And for that, we are applying the clamp theory, uh, which basically says that um, there is a protein, a clamp protein, known as complexin, uh, between the uh, membrane of the vesicle and the membrane of the and the plasma membrane, which is stopping these uh, core snare complexes from zipping completely up, and therefore is stopping the two membranes from being brought so close together that they fuse. Okay, now when a action potential arrives at the axon terminal, what's going to happen is that you're going to get depolarization of the electrical potential difference across the membrane of the axon. Okay, what that is going to do is it's going to activate specific channels in the membrane of the axon terminal here. So, these channels are voltage-gated calcium channels. So, this is a voltage gated calcium channel. I'm writing it over here just because there's not lots of room here. So this is a voltage gated calcium channel. Now voltage gated calcium channels consist of absolutely loads of subunits. Now the pore forming subunit is a subunit known as alpha 1. So this, what I've drawn so far, is supposed to represent uh, the alpha 1 subunit of uh, the uh, voltage gated calcium channel. So I will colour it in this turquoise colour here. Okay, right. Now, there are many different genes in the human genome which code for alpha-1 subunits. And uh, the, um, the alpha-1 subunits that are used in neuronal axon termini are um, the CAV2.1 gene and the CAV2.2 gene. Now, the way that you name the voltage-gated calcium channel is determined completely by which alpha-1 subunit it uses. If it uses the CAV2.1 gene, you name it a PQ-type voltage-gated calcium channel, okay? If it uses the CAV2.2 gene, then you name it an M-type voltage-gated calcium channel. Now, the alpha-1 subunit is, in some sense, the most important one. It's, oh, well, actually, it is the most important one. It's the pore-forming unit. It's what actually allows calcium to move through. Okay, now, uh, there are, however, a bunch of other subunits which associate with the alpha-1 subunit, known as auxiliary subunits or accessory subunits. Okay, and the voltage-gated calcium channel has a whole collection of these. So, um, this one sitting by the side over here, this sort of thing that I've drawn as a rectangle, this is supposed to represent the gamma subunit of the voltage-gated calcium channel. Uh, this one sitting down here is supposed to, in orange now, is supposed to represent the beta subunit. And this odd-shaped thing over here, which I'll draw in purple, this is supposed to represent the alpha-2 delta subunit. So together, they all make up the voltage-gated calcium channel. Now, you might be wondering, why is this the alpha-2 delta subunit? It's because it's actually made up of two separate subunits. The alpha-2 portion is this, um, is this um, blo well, this uh, rectangle that I've drawn up here, and the delta subunit is this polypeptide that spans the membrane down here, and they're connected by disulfide bonds. Okay, uh, so... Um, when the membrane becomes depolarized because an action potential has arrived there, uh, this voltage-gated calcium channel is going to open, okay? And calcium concentration is much, much higher in the extracellular fluid. It's around 1.5 millimolar, which is still low compared to sodium, but it's high compared to the intracellular compartment. Calcium in the intracellular compartment is at around 100 nanomolar. Okay, now uh, that is a big calcium gradient, far bigger than the gradients of sodium and potassium across this membrane. Uh, so uh, basically what's going to happen is that calcium, when you open this channel, is going to move in through that channel into the cytoplasm. Okay, now the alpha-2 delta subunit, we're now going to actually talk about some of these auxiliary subunits, what they do. It basically 
binds to proteins involved in the complex of uh, in the docking complex of vesicles and it means that these uh, voltage gated calcium channels of the n and the pq type that are in these axon terminals are co-localized with the dock vesicles which i haven't really shown very well in this picture but basically they be nearby these cham these um, docked vesicles in the active zone so when they actually open they're going to spray calcium ions onto the machinery that is holding uh, the vesicle docked to the uh, plasma membrane of the um, presynaptic cell. Okay, now there is a protein in the membrane of the synaptic vesicle which is a calcium sensor. So let me draw that protein now. Okay, here it is. We'll denote it like this. Okay, this rather hideous structure that I've managed to produce. Uh, this protein is synaptotagmin. And synaptotagmin is going to bind to calcium when it goes up, and calcium is going to activate it. So, um, let me just, where shall I label it? Uh, I don't know. Um, I'll write its name down here, but it's up there. So, its name is synaptotagmin. Okay, right. Now, calcium is going to come in, bind to synaptotagmin, and uh, what is believed to happen, if you believe the clamp theory, is that synaptotagmin now moves uh, complexin here out of the way, basically. It moves it out of the way. It removes this clamp protein that is clamping apart the um, vesicle membrane from the plasma membrane. Okay, so this is gone. Now what can happen is that these coarse snare complexes conti continue the process of zipping up. So they zip up further and further and further, and that means that these two membranes are going to be brought closer and closer together until they'll fuse. And that is how we release the neurotransmitter, which is, remember, inside this synaptic vesicle here, onto uh, the well, into the synaptic, synaptic cleft, basically, or onto the post-synaptic cell. Okay, right, so that is the mechanism by which uh, we um, dock vesicles at the active zone of presynaptic neurons and then fuse these vesicles which we've docked at the um, active zone with the presynaptic membrane to release the neurotransmitter contents into the synaptic cleft. What we now want to see is tetanus neurotoxin and how it affects these pathways, but we'll do that in the next video.